Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game The Deadlies by Smirk and Dagger. It plays three to five players, is for ages 10 and up, and takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play. In the game The Deadlies, you'll be playing as one of the seven deadly sins, or at least utilizing them, as you attempt to remove cards from your hand. As you play cards from your hand, you're going to be doing specific unique abilities based on the seven deadly sins, such as greed and lust and envy, and of course, attempting to make your opponent's hands become more enriched with cards or reducing your own. At the end of your turn, you'll draw back up to your maximum hand size unless you do not have any cards in your hand. If you don't, you'll reduce your maximum hand size from six to four, from four to two, and then from two to zero, and of course, when you hit two to zero, you win the game. And every turn, you're able to reduce reduce your hand size makes the game easier because you'll have less cards to get rid of. Will you be able to remove all the deadly sins from your hand before any other player? Find out in the game The Deadlies. To begin the game, simply go ahead and shuffle the Deadlies deck after removing the Halo card and placing it on the right hand side of the deck. Make sure that there is space on the left hand side so you're able to use it for a discard pile. Give each player playing the game, and in this case we have two players, a player token that's going to symbolize their maximum hand size. Each player will start with six as their hand size, but it will be reduced by rotating this wonderful little token and turning it over until it hits zero. Then deal out that maximum hand size to each player, and of course at the beginning of the game it will be six cards. After shuffling the deck, dealing out the six cards, you're then ready to go, removing any other player tokens and of course the rulebook from the game and attempting to reduce your hand to zero. Will you be able to do it? Well, first I'll go ahead and introduce how this game is played, and then of course my review. When playing the Deadlies, you'll start by having one player begin, and I like to do it in which the player who most recently committed one of the Deadly Sins is the starting player. They're going to have the six cards in their hand, and then they can play any number of cards following the fact that they meet one of three conditions. One is you can play cards, equal to the set, suit, or maybe the name. Uh, this one's here called Envy, or it's green. You play as many of the green cards in your hand, or many of the pink cards, or the yellow cards, and you'll place them in front of you. The other option is you can play as many of the same number. So for instance, I have three ones here. I can go ahead and play all three of the ones that I have in my hand face up in front of me. And the final way is basically a straight. A straight is considered one, two, three, four, two, three, four, four, five, six, any number as long as they follow that order. You can't play more than one of each number and they must follow from the one to the next highest or lowest value. You can play one card if you want, but you're always trying to play as many as you possibly can to get rid of cards from your hand. After you've placed them in front of you, hopefully being all the cards in your hand, if possible, then you are going to look at the top, top value, or highest value, or top card. Then interact with that card. Some cards, like Greed, will allow you to push your luck on your opponents, attempting to give them more cards in their hand. But if you bust, you're going to be drawing those cards. And if you're extra successful, you can empty your hand. Or maybe Lust, where you'll be able to choose different partners in the game, and you'll both be able to discard a card. But if one of them is sneaky or mean, they can discard a Lust card and make you draw three cards. Envy. You'll be able to draw cards into your hand. Not so good, right? But if you do not have an Envy after drawing those cards, you can trade hands with another player. And so on and so forth. There's a couple other cards in the game, uh, such as the ability to gather a Halo card called Purity. And then there's an eighth card, I believe, called Destruction, which is a Wild. It can be used in any suit or set. And it's also an eight for a straight. Uh, then after that, you're going to discard any cards that are in front of you. And if you have reduced your hand to zero, you will rotate your little player icon here from the highest value to the next highest value. So if I have a six, it'll go to a four, a four to a two, and then a two would go to a zero. If it ever hits zero, you win the game. If, however, you do not empty your hand, you're going to discard uh, all the cards that you played. So in this case, if I played three ones, I would discard them, and then I'm going to draw back up to my maximum hand size. One, two, and three, totaling six cards in hand. Had I actually discarded my entire hand, because I was able to play them all, I would then rotate this to a four, and instead of drawing six cards, I'm now only drawing four cards into my hand, making it a little bit easier for me to be able to rid my cards, or my hands, of cards of the different deadly sins. And that's basically the idea of the game. Play a set of cards, or a suit, or a number, then interact with one of the cards based on what you played, discard the cards you played, if you emptied your hand, be able to flip or rotate the token here, and then draw back up to your max hand size and pass the turn to the next player.
If you're able to rotate it to zero, you win the game. The Deadlies, pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So the way the Deadlies plays is really simple. It's all about removing cards from your hand, reducing your card hand size limit, and then getting it to zero. And when you do that, you win. The trick is how you remove the cards from your hand. Do you want to focus on getting rid of the most cards possible? Well, that might be a good strategy. But if you're left with maybe a one that's red and a, two, and a, and a five that's green, you're gonna be left with those two cards that you need to get rid of. Maybe you wanna actually keep those and get rid of one of the other ones, thusly hoping to pull the same suit or color or maybe the run that you're trying to get because you wanna get rid of all the cards in your hand. Or maybe you're gonna be thinking more about the type of deadly sin that you're playing on top that will let you be able to trade with another player. Maybe you have a bad hand of cards that do not work with each other. And you know, for instance, that Bill or Callie or John have a unique hand that will be able to dump on the next turn. Another thing too is to note is when somebody plays this purity card here, they're able to gather this halo card. With this halo card, they're going to be able to discard their hand when they play it, but they have to wait till their next turn because they have to play purity first and it has to be the top card in order to utilize the ability. So other players can utilize the sins to steal the card and thusly reduce their hand size. So it's really, really tricky when you want to actually utilize this card. And of course, there's only one purity in the deck, so you have to be careful when and how you use it. But because the deck gets reshuffled, it can be used multiple times in a game, even a two-player game. The other option too is Corruption. Corruption is a wild card. It counts as an eight or it's black, meaning it can be any of the different eight colors. And you can utilize this card with those cards, meaning your hand's basically one size lower when you have this card in it, but it has no ability. So it's not gonna benefit you when you play it in like a run, for instance, because it will be your top card. And thusly, the only ability it has is that it is wild. All throughout the game, you're deciding what abilities you wanna play, when you wanna play them, and how many cards will that allow you to get rid of. And as you progress throughout the game, making it go from a hand size of six to four to two to zero, it gets progressively easier. But on the same time, other players are gonna be playing uh, abilities on you that will make you draw more cards or exchange cards with a player who has a maximum hand size. Or if you're the one with a halo and you only have two cards in hand, I promise you players are going to attempt to steal that card from you, not allowing you to end your turn with the halo card being played. And additionally, other players might give you an increased amount of cards, even though you're only at two. So you have to be aware of what you have in your hand, when you have it in your hand, and how you're able to discard and draw. Being able to have six cards in hand can not only be a negative, and generally speaking is more challenging, but you're also gonna be able to draw up new cards. Uh, when you have a two card hand, and then you're drawing six cards from another player, now you've got eight. But even when you discard two, you're still stuck with the rest of the cards, not giving you new cards in the deck to formulate a better hand to get rid of your hand. So you have to focus primarily on the abilities to make it function for you. That being said, this game is a lot of fun. Twists and turns, it's easy to understand. All the different cards work well and function differently, allowing you to push your luck, benefit you in some way if you already have a specific hand type, and of course, allow you to mess with your opponents, which is what you're going to be doing in this game. Giving them sins, removing sins from yourself. It's kind of a theme, right? And I also really like the artwork in this game. It's really cute, it's really fun. They chose some really great artwork for the sins. None of them are uh, overtly like gross or, or mean or crude or anything like that. This can be a family game, even though yes, it has the theme of the seven deadly sins, but like the deadlies, they're kind of cute. And I don't really see any problem with any of the artwork as far as that might go for a younger audience. It plays 10 and up, and that's probably about right. Maybe you don't wanna introduce the sins to kids that are five and up. But if you wanted to play this game with your kids and you had a kid that was seven or six or even eight, uh, any of those ages, this game's probably still going to make sense to them. It's not any more complicated than say exploding kittens, but it definitely has a different strategic tone to the game and how you have to utilize your cards. The fact that this game has a lot of strategy strategy entwined into such a simplistic game makes me really, really like it. This is a game that I'm going to easily keep in my collection. I had a ton of fun just playing it two players. And then when I introduced more players, it got even better, which is great. Usually I'm not a big fan of playing just a two player game that has just cards. I like to have more players in it because I don't find the two player experience to be very fulfilling, but this one does work and it does work well, which is so great. <laughs> That's why it's going to stay in my little game collection of two player games that can also play more players, like kind of like party style games. Um, but yes, I, I really, really dig this game. If you're interested in picking up the Deadlies, it's by Smirk and Dagger, and you can go ahead and check the link down below in the description where you can pick the game up. Overall, I approve of this game, hands down, seal of recommendation, which I haven't given out for a small card game in a long time.
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you're interested in checking out the game, like I said, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and of course the bell notification button. It greatly helps us out here, and we greatly do appreciate it. The website unfilteredgamer.com, tons of blog posts come out, we have a giveaway coming up, and we also are going to be doing um, Moonshell publishing, pushing that out very soon. We're waiting on the last little tidbits of Callie's game. I'm excited to show you that one as well. I think you guys are going to really appreciate uh, the uh, work and effort that she put into it. The live stream is every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one every single week. And uh, it's per it works perfectly now, which I'm so glad. It was. It took us like two months to get it ready for this location. And I finally figured out all the kinks and bugs in it so that we can now do live streaming. In fact, this is probably a game we'll play on that stream because it's so straightforward and easy and fun and you get to see the experience interactions and you can check our youtube channel and of course on facebook every sunday to see us play games like this all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to removing the seven deadly sins from my heart uh, into yours next time <laughs>